Tau, I declare the meeting open. This regular council meeting, work hard when you council, and welcome members of the gallery, councillors, and council staff. I'd like to advise that the meeting, the meeting is uh, being recorded online and uh, for viewing in the future, uh, live streaming, and uh, to assist in the preparation of the minutes to allow. Uh, a true and accurate record to be referred to for the recording of the minutes. I would also like to acknowledge of, uh, acknowledgement of country to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Tomajuna people, and to pay our respect to those that have be passed before us, their history and their culture. Uh, record of attendance, all councillors are uh, in attendance, no apologies, and there are no leave of absences previously uh, received. Confirmation of the minutes of our previous meeting, I'd ask for a, a move and a second. So those. moved, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunham, Councillor Bramish, any corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting are to be identified and agreed to at this point prior to taking a vote to adopt those minutes. Are there any corrections, councillors? I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Declarations of interest. Are there any councillors or staff with an item on tonight's agenda that they uh, claim to have an interest in? Councillor Fairbrother. Uh, Mayor. Item number 9.2, the Destination Action Plan and General Tourism Update. I uh, need to acknowledge that I participated in the Get Closer campaign, so I'll be declaring my interest, but I don't intend on leaving the room. There's no affirmative motion is required, it's only for a note. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Item four on the agenda, 4.1, announcements by the Mayor. There's a couple of things that have uh, occurred late, referred to, and that was uh, in relation to the Cradle Coast Authority's uh, annual, uh, annual meeting last week. Our Deputy Mayor, Councillor Dunham, was elected as Deputy Chair of the CCA. And uh, on behalf of us all here, I'd like to congratulate you, Deputy Mayor Dunham, on your election to office. Uh, and secondly, uh, the Keep Australia Beautiful uh, Tidy Towns Awards at Gradle Mountain last week. Penguin were voted as the Tidy Town of the Year for Tasmania, and they will represent. And I'd like to congratulate the C Central Coast Council on uh, on their uh, one of their towns receiving that award, and they will represent Tasmania at the finals next year at Beechworth in Victoria. And along with that, there were several events that were recognised throughout the year uh, by the Keep Australia Beautiful organisation. And one of those was the Spring Loaded Festival, that uh, the Spring Loaded events that took place in Wynyard uh, and, and Somerset in place of the cancelled 30th anniversary Tulip Festival. Uh, that received a top gong uh, for what it provided for the community and uh, uh, in under the COVID situation was regarded as a great event. So I'd like to uh, also thank the staff for the effort that they put into that event because at one stage, the work that we thought that they would have to undertake to stage such an event may not have been worthwhile, but it proved a very successful event. And I'd like to congratulate the staff and every all the volunteers and the uh, the shop owners and uh, various organisations that took part in that event and gave us something to think of other than um, what was going on around us with the COVID. Thank you. Uh, that moves me to 4.2, my Mayor's communica Communications. There is uh, a list of events that have attended there in the, since the previous meeting of Council. Mr Mayor, could I ask a question? Yes, Councillor. On Deputy the Mayor. 27th of the 10th, the Taswater owner reps meeting, I just wondered, is there any update from Taswater that you could provide with the for the council, please? Uh, I think I'd have to, uh, it was a fairly big day and look, it's a bit vague in my mind, 
And as you know, I had a couple of cook days and had a couple of absent days. I may just have to refer to the GM in, to recollect how that meeting went, Deputy Mayor Dunya. Mr GM, can you uh, highlight anything that uh, we should have mentioned regarding that Taswater meeting? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, the, the meeting on the 27th that um, Councillor Dunning referred to, I guess, was a meeting of the owner representatives uh, to the Taswater AGM uh, in order to, uh, I guess, prepare an appropriate um, list of questions um, and to, to interrogate the annual report and the data provided by Taswater prior to that meeting. So that's been a, a, a reference group or a representative group of the um, Taswater uh, owner representatives is uh, put together uh, and they, I guess, are, are taking the lead in terms of continuing to monitor um, you know, the, the Taswater reports as they become available. So that specifically is what that meeting on the 27th was um, there to do, to formulate the terms of reference for that new new. Thanks for that, Mr GM. So could I move as per the recommendation, please, Mr De yeah, Deputy Mayor Dunya moved. Yeah. Councillor Hyland seconded. Any further questions in relation to those appointments that I attended? If not, I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please say aye. Against? Carried. Notification of council workshops. Uh, there is uh, following council workshops there and the upcoming workshops and, um, and the attendance of councillors, the record of those attended there. So that's item 4.4. Moved as per the recommendation, please, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunya moved. Councillor Brown is seconded. Any questions, any discussion? I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against? Carried. Item five on the agenda. Public questions and statements. There is a list of the previously asked questions and responses, officers' responses. Then it brings us to 5.21, uh, uh, public questions received in writing. And then it brings to public statements received in writing and public questions without notice. And uh, before calling for those, I will go this way. And uh, the council encourages community participation in its meetings through the opportunity for public questions and statements. Consistent with council's core values, councillors and staff strive to ensure all people are treated with courtesy, fairness, dignity and respect. We expect our residents and ratepayers to apply similar standards in their dealings with council. As Mayor, it is my responsibility to maintain the orderly conduct of council meetings and to determine whether a question or statement is out of order due to use of offensive, objectionable or defamatory expressions. I know members of the public will show consideration and courtesy in their comments. Thank you. Uh, now we go to uh, received in writing, Mr GM. Uh, Mr Hutchison, uh, you have a statement and a question. Would you like to present those, please? Uh, good evening. First question is around the Sixties Beach and Freedom Camping so what alternative sites has council shortlisted for public camping in the municipality now that the 60s beach option is looking highly doubtful? Mr GM, uh, who, Mrs Bradley, would you uh, have a hand that question please? Thank you, through you Mr Mayor. Um, so as you would have seen there's a report in the agenda tonight. Um, we've also been working uh, with the Myala Community Centre um, around potentially having a site there. And we have a motion on the books around revisiting um, freedom camping at the showground. So we will be um, progressing that as well. Thank you. Thank so you, Mrs. No Bradley. Freedom camping at the showground at the moment. Uh, there's no freedom camping at the showground currently. No, but um, post the, um, you mean because of the building works that's going on now? Yeah. Yeah, so post that. Um, second question, two parts. Uh, has council ever been invited by Sustainable Timber Tasmania or Forestry Tasmania um, in the past to take the, the management of the Aldina Forest Reserve picnic area? 
Mr. JM. Yeah, th through Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I'm I'm not exactly sure of the uh, the history of the Aldine Reserve and Council and the discussions that have taken place in the in the past. I guess by way of status update, um, we have I guess initialised discussions with Sustainable Timbers um, a couple of months ago now in relation to the future of the reserve. Um, we're interested in their plans and and what they'd like to do, and I guess have agreed to work with them on both a short-term and long-term vision for the site. Um, at this point in time, I guess we haven't had a lot of progress um, in recent weeks as we've been waiting on Sustainable Timbers to, um, I guess, designate uh, the appropriate resource um, to that task, um, but that's certainly what we intend to do uh, following discussions myself and the Mayor had with Sustainable Timbers. But um, others will be able to, I guess, provide a little more history. Um, I know there's been a number of discussions uh, historically with Council and Sustainable Timbers over that site, but I would need to um, investigate further to give you the precise answer to your question. Okay, thank you. And uh, the second part of this, uh, are you aware of the, the costs of the maintenance or the management of the reserve um, to get it back to a, a standard of where it can be there open to the public for recreational use or not? Uh, through Mr Mayor, I guess um, the simple answer is is no. Th there's not, a, a, I guess, a current um, cost around um, existing maintenance or upkeep or upgrade um, of the facilities. I know there's been some discussion, again, historically, but certainly um, nothing has been um, just tallied in recent in recent times. That would hopefully be part of the, the ongoing discussions with um, sustainable members moving forward. Okay, thank you. Um, my statement was around those those issues. So, uh, this is my opinion, and I guess you could disagree with it. But I think the freedom camping expressions of interest process with Sisters of Beach, whilst it could have been successful, I think it was uh, designed to fail. And I believe that the requirements placed on potential applicants were too excessive to run a small public camping area in Sisters of Beach. The risk of establishing the requisite infrastructure versus the usual community response to shaming could have frightened anyone who thought it was a good idea away. So if council wants uh, to reflect the community wishes, then it needs to lead the way and not outsource it to contractors. Um, in my submission during the public consultation phase, I recommended uh, the idea of volunteer host managing potential public camping spaces over the peak camping season. And this would enable it to be uh, council managed rather than privately managed. Um, so there's not really a business model that can support such a small sc scale camping operation where the grounds are anywhere from, um, it would be a public good operating a public space with the view of covering costs rather than making a profit. Um, it would be interesting to hear um, if there's any discussion around this report tonight, um, around from the wool workshop where we went up. Um, my next uh, discussion point is around mountain biking. So. I thank councillors for recently exploring the possibility of creating um, a plan or a feasibility study to for purpose-built mountain bike trails in the municipality. I'm not an expert in mountain biking um, and mountain bike trail building, um, but I can say that Waratah Wyndham has great potential for purpose-built mountain bike riding trails. And we have trail building experts that live and um, recreate in the Waratah Wyndham area. Um, so the, the BMX track upgrades were good and the, uh, weight, uh, and the coastal cycle cycling pathway uh, is, is still um, a bit of a waiting game, um, but there's no barriers to building trails in the area. Neighbouring areas such as Olverston, Penguin, the West Coast and now Burnie all realise the benefits of mountain biking for the community. I hardly need reminding. Um, so the question is where? Um, I think elevation drops or descents and moderate inclines are the key. A um, bit of a summary of the Cradle Coast Mountain Bike Park at Penguin. The sample has a number of tracks with jumps, mostly on flat or relatively low descents between 10 and 20 metres, and then a number of bush trails with elevation ranging from 130, 140 metres to 90 metres, so a, a drop of 40 to 50 metres. Um, the trail is interspersed through there. It doesn't include the new tracks in the Dyer Range, um, which have graded descents, but that's just a, an overview of the, the track there. And for the average or beginner mountain biker, this path is differentiated enough across a range of skill levels that make it reasonably difficult unless you're an advanced prof professional. 
Um, so there's a website called trailhawks.com. So the West Coast tracks, for example, around Zion, 50 to 150 metre descents, and there are bigger ones. Derby tracks, between um, zero and 390 metre descents. Maydina tracks has a maximum of 800 metres descent. Um, general trail descent less than 500 metres. In Prospect and Trevallon, between 40 and 70 metre descents. In Railton, 100 metre descents. In Warrawee Reserve in Latrobe, 100 metre descents. Um, and, and a couple of others there. There is a track on that website that goes through the Magnet Mine Road to Waratah Road uh, with a 490 metre descent and a 290 metre climb. Um, so just for given that information, um, in Wynyard and Surrounds, there are a few areas that I've identified that are accessible by road that sort of meet these requirements. Uh, west to Cone, so to Cone, the Campbell Range um, goes up to about 580 metres to, to Cone, 290 metres, or Arthur River, um, which is about 170 metres above sea level, so it's about a 250 metre descent. Um, in Una and Tacone, Mount Leslie and Scully's Hill, 540 metres in elevation, to Tacone, 290 metres. Um, so that's a 250 metre descent. Uh, Pretty Lima and Jesse Gorge, there's some hills. Morwena Hill, 484 metres. Kalana Hill, 454 metres. Thunders Flat, 90 metres um, above sea level. So that's a 350 metre descent. Sisters Hills to Sisters Feet, 200 metre uh, descent. And Aldina Nursery Road, 100 metres to Blackfish Creek, 30 metres above 70 metre descent. So Waratah Wynyard, I know that was all pretty pretty boring, um, has all of the um, necessary elements in terms of um, elevation above sea level and drop um, to accommodate um, a range of levels of mountain biking um, in the area. Um, so I hope to see something come from that. Um, in March, I sent councillors a study around the views of uh, Boat Harbour Beach residents following the camping ban along the Boat Harbour Beach foreshore, which included a handful of recommendations. And the key recommendation, and the theme of what I'm saying tonight, um, was to utilise Aldina as a uh, public camping area and incorporate adventure-based activities for the community, including mountain biking, with the potential to value add to local tourism through other initiatives. Um, I've seen a lot of potential in that space um, following the neglect and mismanagement by Sustainable Timbers Tasmania. Um, no, it's not all their fault. Um, and I don't um, criticise them completely, uh, but I think it's uh, up to us as a community and this council to take on board um, these ideas and the conversations that we're having um, to actually reclaim that space because um, it's pretty disappointing um, to see year after year nothing happening. And I know it takes time, but I think the time is uh, right to act. Um, so, yeah, I think mountain biking, freedom camping, are possible solutions, not the only solutions, um, but I think uh, there's room there to kill a few birds with one stone. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Susan Robertson, you had a question. Would you uh, present that question, please? Who? Mayor and Council. Um, the zebra crossing, um, I spoke to you about the zebra crossing before, and I would just like to know, and a lot of us would like to know when the zebra crossing in Golden Street um, is going to be put there. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, just to clarify, it won't be a zebra crossing, but there'll certainly be a pedestrian crossing um, and refuge in, in Goldie Street. Um, at this stage, we're working through quotes and uh, at the, I guess, pending the timing of the contractors and working with the retailers, uh, the construction time will be sometime between Christmas and Easter. It'll be in that window. Uh, we don't have, a, I guess, a precise date at this point in time because we haven't had those discussions or selected the successful uh, contractor at this point in time. But um, sometime in that window of Christmas to Easter uh, will be the construction period for that pedestrian crossing in Goldie Street. Sorry, what is, uh, what is this pedestrian crossing? What, what does it look like? 
there, there are designs that are available uh, that we can provide, but it's not a, a zebra crossing as you refer to it. Right, because it's very, it's becoming really dangerous to get across with the amount of cars parked. And that's precisely why um, the work is being done. Yeah. Yeah. I think signage also to say where those cars, where, where they can park their cars, because a lot of people are still parking on Golden Street, and I've noticed that it's still empty at the back, or very few cars there. So a lot of people are having a lot, especially the elderly and the young. Oh, it's just for everybody. It's just a, a madhouse there. Um, I also have a statement. Please go yeah. ahead. Uh, the statement's about um, the record about the um, uh, please can you correct the problems with the sound of the council meetings um, I spoke to the lovely lady and she said to me that they checked it but we've all at home and many others of us still cannot hear um, the sound of the meeting by council um, so um, I if you checked um, Hugh and Valley or Devonport they're as clear as a bell so maybe you could consider not having the councillors um, on film, like a couple of the, I think it's Hewan, they just have a picture of the councillors and then you could just work on the sound. So I don't think councillors have to be watched continuously, but, um, but we can't hear them. If I'm not the only one and I'm quite happy to, to um, do a petition of the amount of people have said, I still I can't hear a thing because I've, I've, I've said to people look go on to um, onto YouTube and watch the meeting and stop grumbling about what you say the council and what they're doing and I'm just getting the feedback well that's a laugh we can't hear anything okay thank you thanks uh, Nicholas Higgins uh, Nicholas would you like to present your questions please good evening all thank you um, the caravan park is on sign. Sorry, in a statement. Yes. Sorry, but two questions in a statement. Yep. So, um, I understand that council is hands are tied um, by the nature of the application for the we delay. We can't quite hear you there. Okay, Nicholas, sorry. Thank you. I'll just try again. Sorry. Um, I acknowledge that your hands are somewhat tied by the nature of the application and the approval procedure, um, but would you be able to tell us the differences? between the initial application and the subsequent application to determine what cause or what set the second application under the threshold of uh, becoming an acceptable solution, whereas the first application went over into a discretionary application. So it's that difference that we'd like to know, what was the differences between those two applications. Okay. Thank <coughs> you. And I expect this to be on a paper. Yeah. Taking notes okay. Mr. Thornton, you understand the question and uh, we leave that with you. Uh, is, is, I mean, is that something you can do? I understand if you say no, legally we can't. Can you handle it now or will you take it on notice? We'll take it on notice, uh, Mr. Higgins. Thank you. And the second is, could council provide any information regarding the traffic management plan as provided by that application and any action that council is to undertake mitigating or implementing that traffic plan uh, to we'll do the facilitate same. the development. The yep. same thing. It's okay. essentially what's happening around that that, um, area. that development. That junction where Splash was yep. or is yep. uh, at that point. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I have a little statement as well. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So as you are all aware, I'm holding a public meeting on Friday to which you are all more than more than welcome. I would like to reiterate re and reinforce that this is not my intention to be critical of councillors, council or the planning department. On the contrary, I actually want to support and improve your ability to do, to perform the job that we voted you to do. To this end, this meeting is an attempt maybe a minor and flawed one, maybe, but an attempt nevertheless to apply pressure on those that create these standards and laws to which we must all adhere. Change the threshold at which the development applications change from acceptable solution into discretionary solution. I 
appreciate the nest of vipers that's going to open with the world of the developers. But unless we, the community, stand up to the developers and get a bit of local say in how our communities are developed, then we will all suffer the consequences of development that is unsuitable for and detrimental to the area. What the changes will be can be, I can't say, and that's for a whole other process. However, if the changes are not a result of a public consultation process that is transparent and not overrun by developers, then they'll be meaningless. I would exhort council to call for the government to allow a full and open process to examine these issues. It's in yours and therefore our interest that you do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Higgins. That, can, that, complete, that completes our um, public statements and questions section. <coughs> we move on to item six on the agenda and it is authority items and at um, 628, we move into that section. And it's now time for public questions without notice relating to planning matters and public statements, which we have none, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, item 6.3. Dwelling extensions and outbuilding located at 66 Old Bass Highway, Wynyard, DA 23 2020. Recommendation there. Councillors, we have a uh, direction to go on this, please. Moved as per the recommendation. Moved, Councillor Highland. Seconded, Mr Mayor. Seconded, Deputy Mayor Dunham. Any speakers? Councillor Highland, do you wish to open the debate? Yeah, shortly, Mr Mayor. It won't be too long, but just uh, there was one representation, uh, and I'd refer councillors to the Part A conditions, uh, in particular 2, 3 and 5, which uh, covers off, I believe, uh, all the queries by the representor. Um, and these these conditions, I believe, uh, will stand to be corrected, but are uh, pretty much standard conditions on all permits uh, in relation to that. Um, and I think there, there was a, a reference made to uh, some issues, uh, ongoing issues uh, in regard to traffic movement in that area. Uh, I believe the representor, his access obviously goes past this place right around the seaside and back up into his, in, into his land. Um, and I've had uh, continuous uh, discussions with our engineer in regard to when and if this uh, coastal pathway ever hits this end of Wynyard. Uh, there are some obvious solutions that can happen in regard to those three, three or four houses that are in that block there, and I think uh, we've had a talk to Daniel about it, and there are, you know, obviously we can uh, have a look at it, uh, maybe not, but I think more so there is a solution there, so I think we'll have a look at that when the time comes. But other than that, it meets all the planning requirements, so moved as per the recommendation. Thanks, Councillor. Any further speakers? No further speakers. I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. That concludes, <laughs> that concludes our planning section at um, 6.31. Thank you. Matters raised by councillors. Response to councillors' questions taken on notice in the previous meeting and 7.11, 7.2. Questions, councillors' questions received in writing nil. 7.3, councillors' questions without notice. Councillors, do you have any questions without notice? Councillor uh, Courtney. Um, I, I've got a question without notice and it refers back to a previous, why does mine always do that? I know that people don't need to hear what I've got to say, but come on, play with your microphone. <laughs> um, in the previous one, 7.11, which was the coastal erosion report, my questions, I'm, I'm just going to explain why I'm asking the question. So the response is that um, this is perhaps more a matter of ethics than legislation and risk management. And I understand where the general manager's coming from in that. 
Um, however, I went through to the state government site where it says this has been recently updated to relate to coastal hazards. I, I'm going to note that this has been recently updated in response to coastal hazards, but we haven't been told what the recent coastal hazards are. So it looks like they've updated their site recently. I don't know whether that's off the back of the report that they've seen that we're not allowed to see, but it does bring me to my question tonight. A lot of the statements in the, what the state government have put up is that the coastal processes, including erosion, and the risks for same rest with property owners. So as a council and owning property on the coastal land and putting our assets and our buildings on coastal land, it would the risk would rest the risk would rest with us as the property owners. On the site, it says that best practice coastal erosion protection works can reduce the risks. However, if you're not informed by an appropriate or relevant professional with expertise, there could be expensive and unforeseen consequences. Well, yes, we know that. That's why we're trying to address it. Now, DPEPWE says we will support individuals and organisations to understand risks from coastal erosion processes and hazards through the provision of information and advice. This is my question. They're saying that they will help us to manage our risks through the provision of information and advice. The provision of information that I want is the most relevant coastal erosion, which would be the 2019 one. So my question is, can we find out when that report is going to be released? So as councillors making decisions as planners, we are actually making decisions on pr property and assets for ourselves fully informed of the risks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Mr. GM, uh, we will uh, we will follow that up. Okay. Good. Councillors, uh, any further councillors' questions without notice? Thanks, Mayor, if, I'll, if I may. Councillor Bramish. Thank you. It's not too hard a one. It is, I've had a few people ask me when the finish date is for the new plaza. Is that what we call it, or the new... We know what you mean, Councillor yes. Ramish. Uh, yes, yeah. we've got a finishing date for that. Mr GM. Uh, um, and I'm happy for Mr Summers to correct me here, but my understanding is um, the bulk of the works will be done by the end of the month. Um, there might be some minor electrical works that need to be completed after that date, but we're expecting the end of the month at this stage, Councillor Ramish. Thank you, that'll be good, thanks. Thank you. Any further councillor questions without notice? Councillor Fairbrother. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I have a couple of questions. One is uh, to do with the Seabrook subdivision, Seabrook Golf Club subdivision. My question, uh, question without notice is, is there anything that council can do to facilitate completion of that Seabrook Golf Club subdivision. Mr. GM, where are we with this one? Can you uh, help us there at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we can certainly reach out to the landowners um, and seek further clarity on what their, their intent is. Um, beyond that, perhaps some workshopping around options with councillors. So. Yeah. To add, we, we have, I guess, attempted on a number of occasions to um, uh, have discussions with the landowners and um, sometimes, or b most of the time, without luck. Um, and certainly we haven't heard any updates for quite a number of months now. So. Um, it's not through lack of trying, I guess um, it has been difficult to obtain any information. Thank you. Further questions, Councillor Fairbrother? Oh, just on that one, if, uh, if councillors could be updated with issues of currency around that subdivision, it would be appreciated as well. Thank you. Uh, another question? Yeah. Um, Mayor, can you as mayor of this municipality write to the relevant state government minister airing concerns about the plight of William Steers. William Steers is a gentleman who owns the property adjacent to the Boat Harbour shop. Um, 
Now, I've spoken to you briefly as well as the general manager about the plight of William. Uh, for those of the council don't know William, uh, William was uh, the roadworks at Boat Harbour uh, shifting the road close to William's property. When the Crown came to council, the, the house was flagged to be removed. Subsequently, the, the Crown have decided to let the house remain. My concern as a, as a local resident and councillor is, is, I suppose, uh, under ordinary planning, you wouldn't be able to go and put a house that close to the road, but it is of concern that you can move the road close to a house. Um, and it presents itself with a most undesirable situation. And I think that as council, Mayor, if we could write to the relevant minister airing our concerns, um, I think that would be good for all concerned. Thank you. Yeah, I have no problem with that, Councillor Fairbrother. It's a hot topic at the moment in many areas. Any further councillors' questions without notice? Do you have another one, Councillor Fairbrother? I do. Maybe a couple more. Uh, I've got a planning question around accountability and transparency. Um, Mr Mayor, if, if I read it right, with our new planning scheme, the Tasmanian planning scheme that we're, uh, we haven't adopted yet, as I understand it, that scheme came to Council. Council uh, decided at the time to send it off to the Tasmanian Planning Commission. I understand that they decided at the time to send it back to Council for amendment of some of our mappings, which Council haven't seen. I understand that the revisions have been sent back to Hobart. Councillors, as a planning authority, are unaware of what those changes were. Is it the case that the revised documents have been sent back to the Tasmanian Planning Commission for review again without Council reviewing the revised mapping and drawing, is the question. Mr GM, can you handle that question? Yes, uh, through you, Mr Mayor, the, 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 the statement of Council Fair's brother there is correct, that um, so the, the document was submitted, there were some queries or questions around interpretation that needed to be revisited, um, that was done, and, and obviously the, the document and the, and the mapping, I guess, has been resubmitted. Um, I don't obviously have the full detail in front of me the, of the nature of those changes or the nature of the requests from the um, TPC, but we can provide that to Councillor so that you can make a, I guess, an informed assessment of the significance of or otherwise, I guess, of any of those um, alterations or the additional information that's been provided. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, if that information could be furnished, would be appreciated. That complete your questions, Councillor Fairbrother? No, no, I just remembered one more. Uh, Mayor, uh, it was raised earlier by Mr Hutchison about uh, bike riding in the municipality and trails. It has been flagged as an item for, for one of our workshops. I was just wondering whether, uh, as part of his statement, he would be able to forward that to Council or alternatively uh, whether Council invite him along to make a submission at the workshop. I thought the information that he has is quite valuable in terms of potential locations. I know, noticed that the omission was the, the Sisters Beach Boat Harbour area, but perhaps he thinks that I've got that area covered. Uh, <laughs> so it may have been deliberate. Um, but, but I think it was worthwhile um, listening, and I know that it is a process that we're going to go through, ask for expressions of interest for people within the community that have an interest in this area to, to have some input. So I guess it's just the timing of that. Um, but I'm quite happy for council staff to take the question on notice and uh, respond accordingly. Thank you. Just very, Mr Mayor, what, what I can say, Councillor Fairbrother, I think at this stage, and I'm happy for someone again to, to correct me, I think we tentatively have a, a workshop scheduled in on the 7th of December. 
uh, at that point in time, I guess, at that workshop, Council can determine uh, the pathway forward, what information we'd like to seek, from whom, et cetera. Um, so I guess we'll have, a, a, I guess, a greater idea of the, the roadmap forward um, following that workshop on the 7th of December. Thank you, Mr. GM. Councillor, uh, any other councillors with questions without notice? Okay, we'll move on to uh, notices of motion, nil received. 9.1 on the agenda, Sisters Beach Public Camping Expressions of Interest. There's a recommendation there, councillors. Uh, yes, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm just wondering in point two, if we could just add one word, con uh, consider conducting a new Sisters Beach Public Camping Expression of Interest early in 2022. I don't suppose there'd be a problem with that, Deputy Mayor Dunham. How do you uh, see that addition, uh, Mr GM? Uh, the Deputy Mayor can move that as the motion, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Is prepared so to move that? Yep, I'll move that motion. Thanks. Deputy Mayor, don't you move with that alteration? Anyone like to second? Councillor Edward, second it. Any speakers? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I really just uh, want to emphasise that um, while we have undertaken an a project of, of endeavouring to get expressions of interest. Um, I'm not sure that we should rely on volunteers to undertake uh, the management of this particular um, uh, caravan site. Um, however, maybe there are some um, volunteer organisations, including uh, if uh, Sisters Beach is the uh, chosen spot, that um, the Sisters Beach Community Association might, Association might be interested. But I do need to emphasise that it is not a money-making exercise for Council. It simply isn't. It is uh, the opportunity for volunteers, if you like, or for volunteer groups, sorry, uh, to undertake the management of this part. So uh, I should imagine that um, if we are much clearer in the intent of what we're trying to do or what the opportunities are, then we may get some more uh, expressions of interest. Thank you. Any further speakers? Councillor Fairbrother. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to move an amendment to the motion, and that is the deletion of the word early and the inclusion of post-2022 elections. If I get a seconder to the motion, I'll speak to the amendment. We have a seconder for Councillor Fairbrother. Yeah, I'll oh. second him. Thanks. Yep, Councillor Bramwich seconded. We have now discussion regarding the amendment. Uh, thank you, councillors. The, um, the amendment intent is designed because I think this council's had a crack at camping in the municipality and, to be blunt, it's been a real balls up, to put it politely. We had... We had a good arrangement at Boat Harbour Beach and we went and canned that, sent them all down to Sisters Beach and then we went and done an expression of interest to to see whether we could get something up. We put it up and it's failed and here we are. Uh, I think it needs a new, fresh set of eyes for a new, fresh set of councillors um, to, move, to move the issue forward. Um, I, I move the the amendment, because I don't believe the motion precludes anybody with an interest coming forward and expressing their interest between now and 2022. Um, I just think that for council to go down that track um, early in 2022, um, we're just, to me, going through the, the same process, I guess, which we've just gone through. 2022 is just around the corner. It's not too far away. I actually like the, the concept promoted in the public from the public gallery to about it, thinking outside the square about how, how if council is interested in this type of thing, we can think differently about delivering the, the service to the community. I think that type of thinking is what we need around the council table to not just go through the motion of doing what we've just done, but looking from 
outside the square to find a solution to something which I'm sure that there is a an appetite in the community for. And I think we've seen that at Boat Harbour Beach. So the community definitely said, and they voted with their feet, yep, we like doing this at this location. The trouble was that it wasn't regulated. We even done a survey of the residents of Boat Harbour Beach, and I remind you all that by majority, they said, yep, we think that is good for the location if council regulated it. We then went and canned it, sent it off to Sisters Beach, and as I say, ended up where we are now. Um, so I would just ask you for respectfully um, revert back to I'll provide some support to the amendment to put it off until the new gi and give the new council some consideration of uh, an important issue. Uh, we've got plenty of other business to attend to between now and then and uh, if somebody comes forward with a new concept, uh, let's have a look at that and uh, move forward then. Thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Any further speakers? Any speakers to the amendment? Yes, I'd like to speak to the amendment. Councillor uh, Courtney, your turn. I'm going to support Darren's motion because I think that, it, you know, as he said, it doesn't preclude somebody else coming forward if they want to come forward and show interest in it. So that's an opportunity that's still there. So they can still contact Miss Bradley and, you know, if they want to go ahead and do it, they can. I, I don't... I, I, I think you're right. I think that new eyes will be um, uh, <laughs> probably very good for this project considering what goes on around the table when we touch on that subject. But it also, I think, gives us a clear year of post-COVID. So we're probably going to have our international borders and our state borders a lot more free-flowing by then. And I think, in all fairness to Miss Bradley, that was the biggest hurdle. I think that was the biggest hurdle for us because we just didn't have the interest in tourism. We didn't have enough tourists around. It's a risky venture for somebody to take on right now. So I think that was probably a little bit of the problem there. And given 12 months to go into 2022, that's going to give us a little bit more of an idea of whether the business is going to be something that somebody can make money out of later at a later date. And it gives us opportunity to identify, I know Miss Bradley's looking at a community centre down at Sisters Beach. So it gives us the opportunity to look at where that placement's going to be and how that's going to impact on a caravan park down there. So I think that actually has a lot of that we push it out. I'll support Darren's motion on that. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Any further speakers regarding the amendment? Councillor Bradley. Oh, sorry. I, sorry, Mr Mayor, I disagree with uh, Darren and, and uh, Councillor Fairbrother and Councillor um, Andrew Courtney. I think uh, we've been there with Boat Harbour Beach and I don't think it's a majority of people that do want the caravan park down there. The people that I spoke to don't want it down there. Perhaps if we could have some sort of a plan or a business plan or, or something to tell people how to run the caravan park might encourage more people to apply to um, come forward and say that they will run the caravan park. At the moment, I don't think anybody knows how to run it. It just needs somebody to say, well, this is how we want it run. Now it's up to you to do it. But I do. I disagree with uh, Councillor Fairbrother about taking it back down to Boat Harbour, especially if we're going to do the Boat Harbour foreshore plan, and it doesn't take in the caravan park. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Any further speakers? Councillor Highland. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared to support the uh, pushing out the date, um, and. And Councillor, Councillor Courtney touched on it on the, uh, the session. And I really think, and, and given what's happened in the last 24 hours even with Adelaide, if they, if they want to move through to Melbourne to come to Tasmania, they can't. They've got to do two weeks quarantine. I think in, well, they will have to. Someone will jump on them shortly the way it's going up over there. So, uh, you know, I think we're jumping to conclu conclusions too quick. Um, Give it a spell, and I think going back, if you remember even the, the point that was made at the workshop, uh, was asked if council would 
on, in some form on their website uh, relate to this proposal. Um, so it's there for any uh, people that want an opportunity if they're looking across their, somewhere else to go and live or a business opportunity and they come across that on their website. So there's opportunities out there and uh, we'll deal with them. If something pops up tomorrow, we can deal with it. So okay. I'll support the amendment. Any further speakers regarding the amendment? There's been one speaker against the amendment. Uh, you have the right to reply to the amendment. No, I don't believe I do, Mr. Mayor. Oh, don't you? Uh, I think the motion just needs to be put. Yeah. Yep, sorry. Yep, my mistake. Okay, we've uh, done and dusted on the amendment. I'll put the amendment. Those in favour, please indicate. Okay. Uh, there'll be a division. Those that are against, Councillor Bradley. I declare the amendment opposed. Uh, Carried, and we record uh, Councillor Bradley is a against. Uh, now the amendment becomes to put the motion. Those we have now, Mr. GM, we have discussion regarding the amend the motion. Okay, discussion regarding the motion, the amendment that's now being put to the motion. Any further discussion? I'll put that as the motion. Those in favour, please indicate. No. Against, as before. Councillor Bradley, record it, please. Declare the amendment becomes a motion and that be the decision that's made on that matter. Thank you. Item 9.2, Destination Action Plan and General Tourism Update. There was a recommendation there that the council note the destination action plan and the tourism update, annual update. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunham. I second the motion. Councillor Fairbrother seconded. Any discussion? Any questions? If I could just make a couple of comments, please, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think that this destination action plan was absolutely um, fantastic in terms of considering the uh, impact of COVID-19 on tourism within Tasmania. And as uh, Councillor Fairbrother talked about the Get Closer campaign, it was fabulous to look at in the Mercury. Um, and the new one is the Forage Drive, which is uh, northern Tasmania. To plan plan a trip around this, it does identify that we need that uh, tourism, tourists can have pure air, rich land, great produce, fresh ideas. This is a journey to feed your soul, explore our northern region. And I think that such plans are. Um, they are outside the box and I think it's great to see that these things are happening so that they promote our wonderful state. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Dunham. Any further speakers or comments? Councillor Fairbrother. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, perhaps another question on, no on notice. Um, I believe it's happening anyway, so maybe it's a question that you get when you don't ask a question. Um, the Northern Forage map doesn't have Wynyard on it. I know that the general manager and staff are highly aware of the omission. I'm just wondering, Mayor, whether we can formally write to the powers to be to have Wynyard put back on the map as we deserve, I believe we deserve to be there. Um, it's interesting of the Get Closer ads that uh, were run by the Mercury Mercury newspaper, <laughs> I think the majority of them were of this municipality um, in the northwest of the, the, the state. Um, and I can understand that because uh, the Deputy Mayor used the word fantastic. To me, that doesn't do what we've got here justice. Um, I think the more you scratch the surface, the more you find... We've got uh, lots of jewels. One of them perhaps has uh, been referred to in some of our correspondence and again brought to our attention uh, by, by Mr Hutchison in, a, in our Aboriginal heritage that we have around the place. And whilst perhaps too many of the wider community perhaps don't get excited by that, um, I think what we've demonstrated around the council table is that if we determine where we've come from, it helps us to firmly establish where we're going. And to me, 
the heritage that we have around this place uh, that refers back to, to early Indigenous Tasmanian history is pretty exciting. And if you go and have a look at Fossil Bluff, um, as, as an example, it goes back perhaps even further than that. And uh, that's not even to mention the, the natural attractions that we've got, such as the, the lobsters and the parrots up uh, Robin Hill Road, etc. Uh, the natural beauty of Boat Harbour Beach and Somerset, Sisters Beach, and you can go on. And I think what's what's happened is uh, this destination action plan and general tourism update has just touched on many of the good things that we're doing here at Council. And I think that uh, moving forward, um, the Council facilitating programs like Get Closer uh, is more good for the Council and good for the community. Um, you'll note, councillors, that the we used to have a regular attendee from the local media. We have one tonight, or maybe a couple, in English media. However, the, the local rag called The Advocate doesn't see Waratah Wingard Council sufficiently exciting enough to send along a reporter to report the goings-on or happenings in this municipality. So it's prudent for council to put it out there in the, the public arena, some of the good things that we've got and some of the good things that we do. And I'd, I'd encourage you all, talking about good things that we have and good things to do, to attend the planning meeting on Friday. Because I think we... We, when it comes to a planning sense, we do it better than anybody else in the state. And I'm, I, I think if we as councillors don't shout that out from the rooftop, no one's going to. And I think the world needs to know that we have a lot of good things here, albeit, yeah, sure, we don't can do things perfectly. We, we always can improve. And I guess that's what the action plan and the tourism stuff's all about as well as planning. It's recognising what we've got, it's planning for where we're going and it's trying to do things better, which I think is what this council's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fair Brother. Um, Mr GM, you wish to uh, speak in regard to this matter? Yeah, just a follow-up point to uh, what Councillor Fair Brother raised there. So, to clarify, the Discover Tasmania uh, website has, I guess, a series of drive journeys placed on there. So last week, the, I think, the Northern Forage Drive um, was released and the, the map placed uh, on the Discover Tasmania website. Uh, there were no towns or, um, I guess, locations from uh, Waratah Wingard listed on that map. Um, so we, we did raise that question. Uh, we have been informed from si subsequently that Tourism Tasmania uh, will update uh, that map. It hasn't been done yet, but they are going to update it and certainly at least Wingard uh, will be included in the map uh, moving forward. We've also been informed that, um, I guess, Table Cape, an image of Table Cape will be used as the hero image of the, um, I guess, the first round of the Drive Journeys marketing campaign. So um, I just wanted to pass that on as well. Thanks, Mr GM. Any further speakers? Councillor Highland. Yeah, Mr Mayor, I'd just like to ask if the Director for Community Engagement could pass on a uh, pretty big thank you to all the staff that sort of got all the tourism operators involved in that Get Closer campaign and the ads in the that went in the Mercury. I know our little show out at Loudale profited greatly over the, particularly over the school holidays with three weekends in a row of over 200, like on the four days. It was just, and 60% of those were people from Hobart, would you believe, Hobart. So, thanks very much. Mr. Thanks, Councillor Island. I'm sure Mrs Bradley will take care of that. Thank you. Any further speakers? I'll put the motion then. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? <coughs> carried. 9.3, the Waste and Resource Recovery Strategy. There's a re recommendation there, councillors. Uh, Councillor Courtney? Yeah, second, please. That was Councillor Fairbrother. Okay, do you wish to open the debate, Councillor Courtney? Uh, not so much a debate. 
not so much a debate, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd just like to once again credit young Daniel's work. What you put forward to us is so detailed and I really appreciate that you make it easy for us to understand because I know that engineers tend to get in their own head and forget that the layman doesn't understand. So what you've done here I think is great, much needed, probably overdue. I noticed that you also managed to get 577 respondents, so <laughs> kudos, that's probably what one of our biggest um, responses to a community survey. Whatever you did, Daniel, just keep doing that. And I noticed that if you add um, the 41% or nearly 42% that have said they want to change the hours and there's nearly 13% that say, yeah, I want to change the hours and I'm willing to pay more, obviously we need to take the recommendation and, and have a look at this because that's a fair size of 577 people that have said, yes, let's do this. So I support the motion based on that. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Any further speakers? No further speakers? I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. 9.3 is the Waste and Resource Recovery S Strategy. So moved, Mayor. Um, can I yes, include a couple of words? The words defer, can I replace with reject at this time? So point one is reject at this time any implementation of, and I'll speak to that if okay. the second is happy for that. You happy with that adjustment, Councillor Courtney? Yes. The word defer to me indicates that we agree to, but we're not going to do it at the moment. Uh, to me, it's like, hang on, hang on, we haven't decided that we're going to do this, so we can't defer it because we haven't decided that we're going to agree to it. So the word, the word reject at this time makes it clear that Council hasn't considered it formally what it does is sends a signal that it, for council to go to FOGO, the council, to me, has to make a conscious decision to do so. Uh, if we go with the word defer, it means that we are, we are making an affirmative decision to do it, not at the moment, but we're going to do it down the track. So we give, in principle, support to implementing that and I just think that the words reject at this time make it clear that we we're not doing something unintentionally yep okay fully explained any wishes for any more speakers uh, yes mr. mayor deputy mayor um, I, I uh, agree entirely with uh, what Councillor Fairbrother has said and uh, the reasons for putting forward the word reject um, because had we uh, deferred and then undertaken <coughs> undertaken the uh, FOGO project uh, the costs would have inc uh, increased and they would have been uh, transferred to our ratepayers and certainly at this time um, our ratepayers, well, not just our ratepayers, everybody has been impacted by COVID-19 and uh, it has um, impacted on our local economy significantly. So I uh, thoroughly support um, what uh, Councillor Fairbrother has put forward and uh, also include the promote alternative methods to encourage the diversion of FOGO materials from landfill. Thank you. Any further speakers? Councillor Courtney. Um, I just want to make sure that I, I totally agree. That's that's fine that you're saying reject at this time, but I would hope with all my heart that even after I've left this council, it's deferred because this is a fairly serious issue and as the landfill sites fill and we run out of room to put our garbage, we need to look at waste as a serious issue for future councils, future generations. So I think this being able to divert a lot of landfill through the FOGO scheme has got that much merit in it. So I really would like to see it deferred. And I acknowledge that you're saying we're only rejecting at this time. I think it's great that we're actually looking at this and it's m even more fantastic that the timing is going to come along with Matt Gresky over at Dolverton looking at a way to process waste that we can, we can actually get rid of it and um, potentially have a commercial viable option to process and then resell waste. 
which will take it out of landfill and perhaps value add at a later date. So I think that's a, an important time for us to be looking at FOGO when you know that we've got an entity on the northwest coast that is going to try and add value to recycling and diverting that from landfill. So I hope with all my heart this is only divert and not actually reject ongoing. So I support it, but yeah, I'd really like to see it go ahead long after I'm gone. Okay. Any further speakers? Uh, Mayor, I haven't spoken to the motion yet. You'll still, yeah, go for it. Thank you. Um, yeah, Councillor Courtney, to me, the, the most important part of this recommendation is point two, that Council promote the alternative met methods to encourage the diversion of FOGO materials from landfill. Um, Councillor, Councillor Edwards just pointed out to me that Council already are promoting using our waste more effectively and more efficiently in the, the, the manner of composting and then putting it in back into our garden, our, our organic wastes. And I, and I guess that is going to be the new normal, I would hope, for, for most of our constituents. Uh, I recognise, Councillor Courtney, that things in this space are still developing and I think that we perhaps need to talk about that at the very next agenda item where Dalverton is front and centre of our waste management uh, review that we're undertaking as part of the next item. Um, so yeah, I, I endorse the work that council staff have undertaken and it has been uh, quite extensive. Uh, but I believe that the other side of it is is that the industry needs to go a little bit further, work up the res correct recipe for some of our organics so that it can be turned into uh, usable compost and uh, taken out of landfill. Thank you. Any further speakers? If not, there hasn't been... Uh, Councillor Edwards, did you wish to speak? I was just going to ask a question um, about what was on the Facebook um, Facebook page. Um, the sharewaste.com, like the app for that, was Cancel going to download that app as well and maybe do it or just to look and see how many people in our region or municipal area will have um, downloaded the app and are doing it. Mr. Jam, would that be a question for Mr. Summers or yourself? <laughs> okay. No, thanks very Mr. Mayor. Look, it was primarily intended for residents, but um, that, that's a creative suggestion that we could take on notice for sure for Council to fully participate. Thank you, Mr. Summers. Okay, there's been no one speak against the motion. I'll put the motion all in favour. Please say aye. Against? Motion's carried. 9.5 on the agenda is the Great Old Coast Waste Management Group recommendation. Just a little bit of movement a seconder. Councillor Courtney and Councillor Tyler. Yeah, open for discussion, councillors. If not, I'll put the motion. Those in favour, Councillor Councillor Fairbrother. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, I, I, I needed to state my claim. I'm in two minds about this particular motion, um, and I will foreshadow that perhaps um, things might become clearer as I speak, but I do foreshadow that perhaps this motion may be deferred until the next meeting. Why I flag that is, is I have some queries um, and some concerns about the documentation as it's been provided to us. Uh, if you have a look at the attachments, I'll bring to your attention, oh, maybe can I rewind a little bit, just to ask a question, when was it that this council signed up to the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group? Uh, I couldn't remember and I can remember us talking about it, but I can't actually remember how long ago it was that we signed up. Does council staff have that information? Mr. Jim, uh, Mr. Engineer, can you uh, relate, relate to that? Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, it was uh, certainly before my time. I'd 
think it may have been around 2008, but we could uh, research that for sure. Uh, I, I remember uh, it was at the time that uh, Roger Yinch was uh, still uh, chair and CEO of Cradle Coast Authority, so it was prior to 2010 from memory. Thanks, Mr. Summers. Yeah, thank you. Um, the, r the reason I asked the question, I guess I, I've been reading the documentation with the question in my mind, hang on, when did we sign up to this? And uh, I've been asking myself, I suppose, where do we sit around the table when it comes to Cradle Coast management in Dulverton? Because I'm not quite sure what this documentation's about that's been provided us for us tonight. And I say that with all due respects. Um, as uh, the... the Cradle Coast annual report is called the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group 2019-2020 annual report. But at the top of the page, you'll see enclosure two is called the Dulverton annual report. And I've scoured the documentation and I can't find anything much about the Dulverton annual report. And I say that, I say that because if You've been around for as long as, as me. You know that there is a, a Dulverton Board of Management. The Dulverton, the Dulverton Waste Management Facility is run by its own Board of Management and as it articulates within the documentation, is owned by the councils of the east part of the northwest. And we as a council, we don't have a stakeholder position within that organisation. Um, my concern is that there is a levy which is levied on the waste management facilities. Originally it started out to be Burnie, Dolverton and Port Latter. We, as uh, you would be well aware, aren't uh, a stakeholder in all of those. We are a user of the Port Ladder facility. My concern comes in is on page 12 of 12 where it talks at point 16, attachment 3, financial management protocols, where it clearly articulates the participating council's Dolbert and Waste Management for the management of funds. And I'm thinking, okay, so we say that we're paying a levy and my understanding of this is that Dolbert and have the authority to spend those levies as they see fit. And I hope that I'm wrong. But reading through the documentation, to me, I just have too many, too, mu too much stuff going on that's not sequentially placed so that I can understand it. And if I can't understand it, I'm sure that the, the, the my fellow electeds around the table won't have a handle on it, um, with all due respect. Because uh, there's, there's a number of issues. One is, I ask you the question, what's our stake in Dolbert and Waste Management? I say we've got limited involvement. We have no ownership. Uh, I think that if it's truly going to be a Cradle Coast waste management organisation, that we all need to be stakeholders. Uh, that includes Circular Head. So, again, I come back to, ah, oh, maybe this is an issue where we need to think outside the square. Perhaps it is that the Cradle Coast waste management group needs to have some ownership of the Dolvin waste management facility and the Circular Head facility for us all to be stakeholders and players around the table. And I know that that might be a little bit revolutionary for some people. However, if we we're going to do waste and we do it in a coordinated approach, perhaps it is the thinking that we need is to think a little bit outside the square. And for me, there are too many unknowns. I don't know when it was that we signed up to the Cradle, Cradle Coast Waste Management Group. There's no information there on the board of directors and what their involvement has been in the management of the Dolvin facility. In an annual report, if you have a look at Waratah Wynyard Council's re annual report, you can see who we are, what our roles are, what we do, our background, and there's a lot of information about us as a council. 
there's nothing in the Dolbert Manual Report about Dolbert and Board of Management, and to me that is of concern. And the more you delve into the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group, and I recognise that we have a lot of our talented staff on that, I just think to, to note the report um, and the new arrangement, which if you go back to 2007, the, the arrangement back in 2007 was between Burnie, Circular Head and Dolverton. And I, I fail to see where we as a Waratah Wynyard Council fit into that. Uh, and I'd like to understand it before I decide or determine that we agree to go to the new arrangement from the old one until at least I have a handle on what the old arrangement was. So, Mayor, I think I'll exercise my right that I flagged and ask that the matter be deferred and see if the information can be furnished and we deal with this matter at the next council meeting, if, if there's no impediment from us doing that. Thank you. Okay, then, to proceed then. Oh, Mr. Jerry, do you wish to speak? Yeah, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I, whilst I understand the, the point that Councillor Fairbrother has raised, I, I don't share the concern that he does ar around the um, the nature of the changes. This particular arrangement has, as um, Mr. Summers said, has been in place for quite some time, and the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group annual report uh, is provided to Council each year. Um, so I think it's worth explanation. And again, uh, Mr. Summers, if you'd like to assist in any way, please do. But to clarify, a, a levy is collected, as you rightly pointed out, Councillor Fairbrother, and um, Dalbert and Waste Management administer, if you like, the, the, the programs, um, the educational programs, the, um, I guess, grant programs and so forth that uh, guess, expend that particular levy on behalf of the seven councils in the northwest coast. What the, what the change is, is that previously um, the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group um, were heavily reliant on council officers. So each council nominated an officer uh, to be part of the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group and they would then determine an annual plan as to how to expend their levy each year. They would monitor the expenditure and the, and the progress against the annual plan that Dalverton would deliver on behalf of the councils. They would review the annual report uh, and uh, provide some technical advice. The change is that's been presented here is that rather than council officers uh, form the basis of the Cradle Coast Waste Manage Management Group, that becomes the general managers. Um, so Dalverton now report to the, uh, it's proposed that Dalverton report to the general managers to have their uh, proposed annual plan um, sort of signed off. The monitoring of their progress and their um, their actions is then reported to the general managers um, and the draft annual report, their financial statements, etc., go to the general managers rather than an officer from each council. And that was because a lot of the officers didn't feel they had the decision-making capability. Um, they were going back to managers, they were going back to general managers, going back to councils to, to seek approval. So. Um, I guess that whilst they will provide some technical advice still, um, they won't have that decision-making capability that they have now. So the proposed changes are there to, I guess, expedite um, a, a process that already occurs, that has been in place for quite some time, um, and it, it remains relatively unchanged other than, uh, as I said, that the, the body that forms that Cradle Coast Waste Management Group um, yeah, rather than being council officers, is reverted to, to general managers. So nothing else in relation to the governance model, um, the strategic planning, the annual planning, the delivery, the annual reports has changed. It's simply uh, that, that group um, that is proposed to, to change under this new terms of reference. So I think it's important just to, to clarify that. Have I missed anything there? Thank you very much, Mr. G. And does that assist in any way, Councillor Fairbrother? That the, the management of Dolverton and the membership of Dolverton remains separate and remains unchanged. This is the Cradle Coast Waste Management Group, I guess, um, administered or um, managed by Dolverton, who provide the, I guess, the administrative and financial management of that group. Um, the, the term in the
disclosure of Dalvin annual report is probably just a, 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 a mistype, if you like. That should have said you know, Cradle Coast Waste Management Group annual report as opposed to Dalvin. I think there's nothing more um, that's happened apart from just the, perhaps the wrong use of word. It was provided by Dalvin. It's not their actual annual report. Good on. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Okay. Any further speakers in regarding to the motion we have on the books? None? I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against? Carried. 9.6, the procurement policy review. Recommendation there, councillors, and explanation. So moved, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunyan moved. And seconded. Mr Courtney, seconded. Speakers, any speakers? Just a quick question through you, if I may. Um, I know that before my time, we used to uh, do tenders for 50,000 and over instead of 100,000 and over, and it did change to 100,000. I understand the reasoning behind that because of the laborious work that goes in putting the tenders out and getting them back. Um, the only thing I would ask is at this stage, and I know it m perhaps isn't relevant to this particular process, and, and I'm happy to take this as a separate item, but could we look at reviewing the fact that we don't have a list of um, what we've spent? Like, I know that uh, Councillor Bramwich and I used to go over the checks fairly thoroughly and that was removed so we couldn't see expenditures. Um, you know, I'm not saying, obviously, I've got a lot of faith in you as a general manager and I think that this council has a lot of officers that have got a lot of integrity. However, if you move on, that, that would be my concern, that we could have two tenders that are not put out in the public arena for scrutiny that are both contracts that are $90,000 each that could be one contract that we don't know about. So there's ways to get around this particular process, which I don't think that you would be able to um, get around if we could see the expenditures. So just at this stage, if we're going to keep with the current process of going for 100000 as our minimum, that's fine. But could we look at introducing um, a way to show the council there's other expenditures that are going on within council I know that it was because there was a 24-hour period it would take to do that manually show us what the, the money was that had been spent in the checks. Just want to know if we've had any progress on perhaps doing that a little bit more streamlined, if there's a way to be able to give us that back, if we're going to continue with 100000 being the, the marker in light of the fact that, you know, no problem while you're sitting at the helm, but I've got to look at this as a councillor moving forward and not necessarily having the same staff and the same GM. So if we could just look at that as part of it. Yeah, moving forward. Mr GM, do you have any comment on that, uh, 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 Councillor Courtney? Uh, uh, through Mr Green, uh, not a lot. I, I understand the point and um, perhaps we'll, we'll have a discussion as a management team around our, our financial reporting and um, yeah, just look at different options that if it would satisfy the requirements of um, Councillor Courtney, we'll perhaps bring that back through a workshop so we can make sure that we're all, all comfortable uh, where that might lie. Thank you, Mr GM. Any further speakers? Yes, please, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunya. Uh, thank you. Um, as the mover of the motion, I thank um, Councillor Courtney for her comments and uh, I think they're very valuable for uh, f uh, further discussion. Um, I'll identify for you the summary of policy changes on page 65. If you note those, that is what um, is going to happen with this particular policy. Um, and I do uh, endorse those um, policy changes, include inclusion of environmental and sustainability sorry, considerations in purchasing decisions, etc. So I do think that um, it is a good recommendation. The changes are, are uh, keeping us um, up to date with the way our operations should be happening in terms of pr procurement. So I do ask that councillors support this motion. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Dunyam. Any further speakers? Councillor Fairbrother. A few things, in, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, perhaps a, a question, if I might. The, uh, in the I draw your attention, councillors, to the procure procurement policy as it's presented in our, in our documentation under the uh, council letterhead. Um, there is a table there called principle, definition and what we will do. My question 
is of council staff or is to council staff, those those principles there, should those principles reflect the organisation's values? Uh, the reason I ask the question is that we're currently reviewing our values and for the policy to be up to date or most up to date, I was just wondering whether those principles there should reflect our new revised values for the organisation. Because I, th I think, to me, those ones that are presented are, yes, what we should strive for, um, and they are, by the main, some of our existing values. Given that we're reviewing our values, my question is, does should that column there reflect our organisational values or are they things that we are just aspiring to? Uh, thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Mr Searle, um, could you uh, address that question from Councillor Fairbrother, please? Yes, I will. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, those values, are, there is a relationship to the organisational values. Um, there's no doubt about that. So it would be worth revisiting those values once we do finalise the review of, of the organisational values. But the values that are contained in the policy as it stands is actually from the Australian Standard document. Um, so I would suggest that they remain appropriate um, at this time, but we could certainly have a look at those again next time we review the documents to make sure that um, they're consistent with the values that we, we come up with. Thank you, Mr Shell. Any further? Do you have another question, Councillor Fairbrother? No, I wish to s speak to the motion, if I may. Okay. Um, thank you for, for those comments. Um, perhaps we should adopt the Australian standard for our values, uh, because I, I believe that most of the, well, all of those things that are in the principal columns is a good way for council to do business with the community. Uh, I will emphasise the, the fact of open and effective communication. I did, I did articulate at the last council meeting, um, or perhaps it was when we considered our annual report, I did make mention of the general manager and said, our general manager is only as good as the staff he had has around him. Um, and I guess I bring this to your attention because there has been a... Uh, a resident at Boat Harbour who wanted to cut, cut, cut down some trees. I know the general manager indicated to us uh, the willingness of the person to come to the party and make a contribution. Uh, that was back in September. We're now in November and the matter still hasn't found resolution. And, and I guess it fits within procurement because essentially we're having a financial transaction with a ratepayer and the manner in which we conduct ourselves to me has a lot to be desired. Um, I just think that we need to pull up our socks in this regard. Um, open, effective communication, fair dealing. Fair dealing to me is, uh, and value for money, is not trying at all costs to save a dollar. It's a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And I think that they are the things, if we are to promote values of the organisation, it needs to be from the general manager down to whoever it is has the lowliest, lowly jobs. Perhaps it's a councillor. Um, I, I think that we need to be consistent across the organisation. We have these policies for a reason. We have values within the organisation for a reason. And I think that it'd be good for us to be able to walk the talk and live the values that we have. And if we don't like the values that we've got, we need to change them to better reflect the expectations of our community because I think that that's what we're here for. And in the main, they are written in the procurement policy, some of our values. It's just that we do right throughout the council need to not only have these policies because we need to have policies, we, we need to live the, live the talk. And I guess that comes back to us as elected members on the feedback that we get from community members and the incident that I've referred to it falls well short of my expectations of a best practice council.
I'll leave those comments with you. Thank you. Okay, further uh, further speakers in regarding to the uh, motion we have on the books. Any further speakers before I put the motion? As we haven't had anyone speak against, I will put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. We now move on to 9.7, which is the financial report for the period ended the 31st of October 2020. There is a recommendation there, councillors. Councillor Courtney moved. I'll second that, Mr Mayor. Councillor Mayor Dunham seconded. Any speakers, any questions? No speakers, no questions. I'll put them up. All in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. 9.8, Senior Management Report. There's a recommendation there, councillors. So moved, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor. And Councillor Highland seconded. Any, any speakers, any questions? I have a question, Mr Mayor. The um, Somerset Sporting Precinct, is there any further update on commencement of meetings and dates, etc.? Mr GM, uh, can you handle that one? I, I can. Um, I presume the Deputy Mayor is referring to the working group, is, is that right? Yeah. Uh, th there hasn't been any meetings of that, that working group um, at this point in time. It hasn't yet started. There has been some preliminary, I guess, discussions held with the Somerset Primary School, um, the Department of Education about that particular precinct. Um, currently we're doing some internal work on, on that project and uh, when that concludes and we have some more information, we'll be in a position to be able to gather the first meeting of that group. But it won't be for another... Uh, I wouldn't imagine that would be until the new year. Thank you, Mr GM. Yeah, thank you, Mr GM. It was actually... Um, my question was an update on commencement of meetings. I know that they haven't started. Thank you. Any further speakers? Any further questions? Councillor Courtney. Just a question, if I could. I noticed in the senior management report that there's been a request being received by Maddie Wells to renounce her Australia Day award. Is there any information that you can give the councillors around that? Mr Chair. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, that was, uh, we received a, a letter um, from Ms Wells. Essentially, it was to... I guess to, to summarise or paraphrase, it was that to do with her Indigenous beliefs and um, and she did not want to be associated with, um, I guess, the, the Australia Day concept. Um, so I hope, I hope that gives us justice how I've explained that, but um, that's the premise, I guess, of her, um, her request. Thanks, Mr GM. Councillor Fairbrother. Um, Mayor, I have a staff-related matter, so perhaps the response should be provided within closed session, but I'll ask the question in open session, if that's okay, or I suppose the general manager won't know what the question is until I ask it. Um, but I, I bring councillors to the attention of page 95, where we have planning permits approved under delegation. Um, and I ask the question whether council staff have adequate resources in the area of planning and I ask the question respectfully but I do so because of most of those within the report go out to 41, 42 or even longer days before permits are issued and uh, my question is, is, is our st staff overrun uh, is there enough of them um, for for that for that to happen um, and I understand that it's uh, we've we've just been through a difficult period with COVID and a new working type of environment so I appreciate all of, all of that it's just that uh, some of the feedback that I've been getting is that people within the industry understand Friday afternoon four o'clock that's when the further information requests are coming through to them from council and I'm just thinking looking at this um, there is what 22 it's probably a separate issue there's 22 applications there um, it, it's an interesting fact 
that two of those 22 are permitted application, the rest, the rest are discretionary applications, which have had no representation made on them, so they have been approved by our staff under delegation. So I think it's an interesting fact in light of the, the presentation that was made before about how the system works and how it is intended to work. Uh, I just wonder whether the caravan park issue is more about the issue and the type of development as opposed to the process. Because the process, when you look at this, seems to be working as it intended, uh, perhaps. Um, but I'm quite happy to have, have the discussion. So, so the question, question is um, one that may well be better responded to in a closed session. I'm happy to provide, a, I guess, a, without going into details, a, a, a broad summary to put on the on the public record. There's certainly no no harm in that, and I think the observations of Councillor Fairbrother are indeed correct. Um, I, I guess a couple of points of interest. Uh, one is we are seeing unprecedented numbers through the through the planning area. Um, so uh, the, the the sheer volume of work that is going through this particular department is significantly up to, to what it has in, been in previous years. Um, we're aware of that and we have an added resource. We do share some planning resource with Circular Head um, and they're equally, um, I guess, facing some you know, increase in, in their workload and particularly some highly complex um, planning matters in, in that area as well. Um, so that certainly uh, impacts our resource. Uh, I will add, we, we have one of our planners currently on maternity leave too, um, to who currently um, has not been replaced, but we have put steps in place to um, to have that rectified and we've got some relief on the horizon. We've got some contract um, planning um, support at the moment and um, have some further support coming at the end of the month. So uh, broadly, in, I guess gen to generalise, um, I think there are a number of factors um, that are causing you know, those um, processing days to, to read as they currently are. Thank you, Inspector GM. Thank you for that uh, comprehensive response. Okay, I'll uh, ask for any, any speakers to the motion, moved by Deputy Mayor Daniel and seconded by Councillor Highland. Any further questions? Any further speakers? Councillor Fairbrother, your light was on. Thank you, Mayor. I've got another couple of questions, if I may. Okay. Um, bring to the attention page 97. There's an item there, uh, 10th of the 12th, 2018, uh, which talks about um, an audit of beachfront properties at Sisters Beach. It was a motion passed back in December after the current lot of new councillors got elected to council. And, and it was to do with a Parks and Wildlife audit of uh, the Crown Reserve at Sisters Beach. I guess my alarm, well my, my interest got heightened when I noticed that discussions underway to see if this can be incorporated into Council's erosion assessment. My concern is with that is that Crown Land Services have been fairly well defined about what's theirs and what's ours and where their interest lies, and I think that we need to treat like with like. Uh, I have a concern that council, way back then, I my concerns about council taking issue with this because it was a fight which was not ours. At the time, I don't believe councillors knew or understood what they were actually asking for, and respectfully, I have subsequently had the discussion with Councillor Edwards, and she did acknowledge to me that she didn't fully understand what the implication or consequences of that particular motion was. And if I bring it to your attention, as I understand it, councillors, what it'll be is council going and undertaking an audit of all, all of the Crown land area outside the property boundaries at Sisters Beach from, from the creek onwards that is Crown land. 
and council are undertaking an audit and then after they undertake the audit, report back to the Crown. Um, it, to me, is a role for the Crown and not council. So why we are going down this track, which I've just been alerted to when I read the agenda, is beyond me. Uh, Mayor, if I need to put forward a notice of motion that take that challenges this action, um, that for the next council meeting I'm happy to do that. But to foreshadow a motion that I will move at the next council meeting is that council take no further action in relation to property assessments or assessment audits. Uh, where it is identified as a Crown responsibility. Um, Mr Gian. Mr Summers, do you wish to um, speak in relation to Councillor Fairbrother's concerns? Yep, uh, absolutely. Through you, Mr Mayor. Look, um, uh, hopefully for Councillor Fairbrother's benefit, uh, I can reiterate that the same distinction uh, that uh, Council don't seek to, to take that on uh, what, what Council has done is put Parks and Wildlife in contact with the consultant uh, who was awarded um, coastal erosion assessment investigation works by Council uh, some months back, alluvium, around some areas where Council does have a licence, the public areas, and for Sisters Beach, that is just the, the creek mouth. Uh, I understand late last week, alluvium uh, presented a quote to do the works on behalf of Parks and Wildlife across that Crown Pathway, which now Parks and Wildlife will consider. Um, we sought to connect those two parties so that um, obviously Crown will make some determination to, to do or not do actions. Council will likewise have a report presented to, to do or not do actions. It gives uh, opportunity for um, Parks and Council to not have disparate recommendations that are incompatible, but that, of course, is the decision-making for Parks to determine who or which third party they engage to do that assessment of the dune flood. So. Thanks very much for that, Mr Summers. Councillor Fairbrother. Um, just a supplementary question. Has the uh, tender document been segregated into erosion uh, erosion to control versus uh, property identification. So, so the cr Crown can either say, yep, we're going to fund this or we're going to fund that. Uh, th through you, Mr Mayor, look, I, I don't have the details as to what the Crown scope uh, for thing is, but um, I can say we've put the two parties together to so that a, a scope and cost can present it, be presented uh, to parks and they make a decision from there. So. Thank you. Any further speakers? Are there any speakers to the motion or any questions? I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Sorry, councillors. I just wanted to know, Mayor, whether the Deputy Mayor wanted to speak about her appointment on page 91. Uh, the general manager has identified that he attended board meeting of Cradle Coast Authority. Perhaps, Mayor, it might be an opportune time for the Deputy Mayor to make comment about her most recent appointment, which I congratulated her on earlier in the day. Okay. Uh, I guess we could get... Okay, but we've, uh, we've got a motion. We've put the motion, but... Um, Deputy Mayor, don't you? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Very briefly, um, I was uh, elected to the position on uh, Thursday um, and I have not had a great deal of information about what uh, the extent of that particular role, but it is um, representing the nine councils throughout the region and uh, endeavouring to encourage collegiality between all councils, east and west, um, to make those decisions that support the region. My understanding is that um, there, are, there is movement afoot to um, endeavour to get funding for the whole region and then distribute that funding to councils for appropriate uh, use for their projects. However, 
Um, nothing has been uh, set in concrete yet, and uh, I will say that it's just a little early for me to give any real report, but um, it is a representative um, role. So thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay, I'll put the motion, I declare the motion carried. We move to item 9.9 .9 on the agenda, the minutes of the Waratah Community Board, the 26th of September. The uh, unconfirmed minutes are there. And so I'm moved, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunham moved. Councillor Highland second. Any speakers? Very briefly, Mr Mayor, it is again, uh, it's very good to see that the Waratah community is working hard to um, bring about those projects to complete them and uh, I think they're working very hard together but they're also working very hard with the council so I think that uh, they should be commended for that and uh, Councillor Highland as the chair he seems to be cracking the whip well enough to bring them together so um, it, it is um, it's very good to see a community working so hard for their own benefit. Thank you Deputy Mayor Daniel. any further speakers? No further speakers, I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Item 10 on the program, matters proposed for consideration in the closed meeting. Uh, there's a recommendation there that the council resolves by an absolute majority that the matters listed below be considered in the closed meeting. Someone like to move that, please? So moved, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunham. Second, Councillor uh, Bramish. I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. At uh, 7.48, um, a recommendation that the council resolves by an absolute majority that we go into closed meeting to consider the following matters. So moved, Mr Mayor. Deputy Mayor Dunham, Councillor Courtney. I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Yeah, we now cease recording of our meeting.